God can never tempt you, but he, he can test you. There are so many examples of tests in the scriptures. God told Abraham, said, now I know. When he said, go, go, and, go, and, go and sacrifice Isaac. He said, now, I, in other words, I was looking at what you're going to what you're going to do. Now I know. So there's the process of testing. Now the major difference between temptation and test is that when a test is the opportunity to promote you. It's not to it's not it's not to destroy you. Test when you are being tested, your loving father is giving you an opportunity to promote you. It's just like doing an exam. Without an exam, you will not go to the next class. So God tests you. In fact, you know, I always say that the Holy Spirit gives you an exam. He gives you also area of concentration. For Nigerians, you understand what I mean. Areas of concentration. Areas to read. And as a matter of fact, they do it a lot in the Western world. The exam is so, is so, is so amazing. They will tell you where to read. They will give you time to read it. Why? Their intention is for you to pass. Unfortunately, in some countries, at least I studied in Nigeria, so I can use that as an example. And you will find lecturers bragging that oh, you can't pass my 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 my. If you're not, you're not going to pass my course. Or some will even say you can't get more than sixty percent in my course. Nobody gets more than sixty percent. Nobody. That's temptation. Because if some are glad that people fail, they, they you fear them as a lecturer. You fear them. Ah, that is very wicked. Oh, that, and the lecturer comes to the class and also is telling you, yes, if you are not serious, I'm going to fail you. I'm going to... There's a difference between temptation and test. The devil tempts you to destroy you. God tests you to promote you. The devil tempts you to destroy you. God tests you to promote you. So it says, when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Alright? But, each person is tempted when they are dragged away, now listen to this, by their own evil desire. It's not somebody else's evil desire. By their own evil desire. It is your own. The evil desire came to you. The evil desire came to you. It is not another person. Alright? Let me say this. Let, let me digress a little bit. When you are discussing with someone, don't start sentences like, it's not my fault. Or is it my fault? In other words, it's the, that the mindset is already talking about apportioning blame. You are immediately you are pushing it. Ah, who did it? Ah, it's not my fault. It's not my fault that it happened. That it don't start your sentence like that. Don't start a discussion like that. Don't start an answer to a question like that. It's not my fault. Or is it my fault that this thing happened? No, no, no. Sometimes it's not even about. I always tell people it's not about apportioning of blame or fault. Let you have, as a particularly as a man or as a leader, you have to be solution focused. You know, when you say is it my fault? It's not my fault. Oh, it's not my fault. Now you are shifting responsibility. You are pushing responsibility. You are shifting and pushing responsibility away from you. But what you should know is that taking responsibility means be solution focused. When everybody is doing it, say no. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? Alright? So, you, you know, particularly now as a man, you see, one thing you should know is that as a man, you are looked up to for direction, for leading, for solutions. If a man anywhere, if a man in your home... The, your family looks up to you for solutions. It doesn't mean the wife is, is daft. No. But that's the way God has created it. He said, dear, what do we do? They look up to you for solutions. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. God will bless you. At David Kolaokewo YouTube. Follow me on all uh, platforms.